Not surprisingly, the chemical policy within the EU is the most advanced policy on the planet in this field. This is due to the relative long history of research, its quality and the political framework that resulted from scientific evidence. Nevertheless, some regulations need to be updated to make them fit for purpose, and the chemical strategy is an important pillar of the EU Green Deal. So now I'm looking forward to getting the latest information on the strategy now from EU Commissioner for the Environment, Oceans and Fishery, Beginius Sinkevichus. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, you can hear me well. Uh, Loud and clear. To, 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 to everybody. <laughs> to everybody from Brussels. And of course, thank you very much for this invitation. At the Commission, chemicals are very high on the agenda, at the moment especially. Uh, so I think it's a great opportunity to share with you uh, our thinking. I see high on the agenda at the moment, of course, uh, uh, they are really far from our lives. Chemicals are used everywhere. Uh, I don't know any business sector, office or home that is free from chemicals. And why it would be? Uh, they make uh, life more comfortable, easier, cleaner and so on. And they keep on coming. Hundreds more are designing better products, new services and more efficient production. But though intentions are usually good, the dangers and impacts are also very real. Many chemicals are hazardous by nature, and some lead to irreversible damage to the environment, to humans, and of course, to future generations. Uh, so vigilance is extremely important, uh, in particular when chemicals combine in our bodies, in, 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 in house, uh, water or soil, they can have impacts that put us at risk. And when I said Vigilance, uh, I also meant knowledge. Uh, our approach to chemicals is always rooted in knowledge. It is, it's, it's, it's built around expanding our understanding. And that makes this project uh, very special. Human biomonitoring for Europe is making more data available, increasing the sum of our knowledge about common chemicals and hazardous uh, ones as well. The more we know about where chemicals are in our bodies, uh, the better we can work out their impact. And when you add human biomonitoring to environmental monitoring, it makes strategic planning far more effective. HBM uh, for EU has done a great job by establishing national hubs so that each participating country now has far more experience on this very specific and, and delicate exercise. Making it easier to compare results between countries has been especially valuable. And some of our suspicions have been confirmed. We, know have, we now have solid evidence that flame retardants, uh, uh, pellets and, and, and uh, bisphenols are present in, in, in the bodies of, 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 of uh, of all age groups in basically whole member states. It gives scientists a, a, a large amount of data to work on to determine the risks uh, we face and the impact uh, they have on our health. We uh, carry these chemicals around uninvited inside our body. The European policy approach has always been ambitious. Uh, the aim is to offer the highest level of protection to human health and the environment while stimulating innovation and competitiveness inside the industry. In our legislation, those two objectives are always linked and they have always driven EU research and innovation funding. We have been uh, looking very carefully at our effectiveness in, in reaching those objectives. Many of you have been involved. The evaluation showed that we do have the most advanced chemicals policy in the world, but what they also show alarming trends. And, and, and very clear signs that our current policy is failing when it comes to protection against chemicals exposure. 
as we can also see from 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 this project uh, there are growing numbers of hazardous substances in ecosystems in human blood in children and in unborn children as well so uh, chemicals are associated with the increase in diseases and biodiversity loss citizens uh, know this and and they care our studies show 90 percent of, of of eu citizens worrying about the impact of, of chemicals in everyday products the share of chemicals on on the uh on the eu market uh that are hazardous to health and and the environment is is not going down this is true for even the most hazardous substances the shift to greener chemistry is not happening or at least is not happening fast enough and and, and production continues to grow in, in fact it's expected to double by 2030 so without appropriate policy measures the harm to humans and the environment is bound to increase and, and globally the world is failing to meet the 2020 target for the sound management of chemicals as set out in uh, sustainable development goals so it is time for a new approach and for all these reasons i have mentioned you the commission made a commitment in the european green deal to propose a chemical strategy as part of its wider zero pollution ambition for toxic free environment the green deal defined the objectives the aim is to protect citizens and the environment better against hazardous chemicals and encourage the development of safer alternatives. of course nobody was thinking of covid 19 when the strategy was proposed but uh, on the other hand the pandemic has been more important and for several reasons firstly because it's obvious that chemicals will play a vital role in controlling the virus we need them for producing pharmaceuticals and that need is now greater than ever and related to that our need for strategic autonomy is also greater greater than than, than ever before secondly because the more we are exposed to hazardous chemicals the more we are vulnerable to a variety of diseases when our immune systems and our respiratory systems are suffering due to environment factors the effect on our health is, is all the more serious. So protecting citizens from hazardous chemicals is an important step in building more resilient society. Last, thirdly, uh, because the strategy will not only be about health and environment, but also about boosting competitiveness and innovation in the chemicals industry, it will make a crucial contribution to the EU's economic and social recovery and the green transition. My original plan was to give you the details today, but we need to wait another two weeks for that. Uh, but I can give you uh, the overall shape. Uh, the long term aim is a society where safe and sustainable chemicals become the norm to the benefit of, of the people, the planet and the economy. The systemic transformation of, of, of the way we produce and use chemicals won't happen overnight and it will require some ambitious steps and to get there we will propose a mix of measures a blend of regulation and softer instruments aiming at increased protection and, and incentivizing innovation in some cases that means stronger legislation despite the achievements of the current legislation not all citizens are protected equally and not all chemical risks are addressed we need to see a more resolute approach to endocrine disruptors, the combined effects of chemicals, the persistent substances, uh, like I, I heard it was quite mentioned a lot in your previous discussion, like PFAS, uh, as it is promised in the Green Deal. But we need to support the industry as well by incentivizing innovations that are safe and sustainable. We will be doing more competitiveness of the industry humans by its nature are very inventive but they are also very conservative as i said before the pace of substitution of hazardous substances is still way too slow the front runners who produce safer chemicals are still held up by many barriers this has to be addressed uh, europe has excellent scientific and technical capacity and we need to use to those advantages to lead the transition and we will be taking our responsibilities very carefully we hear the call to simplify regulatory processes and for more coherence across policy objectives and legislation. I know very well that the industry needs uh, clear and effective rules. 
we are determined to deliver on that. Sound chemicals uh, management has a very obvious foundation, robust knowledge. Without that, we can never take the vital steps that, that ensure protection. So the strategy also includes strong focus on growing our knowledge and sharing it widely. So it reaches the places where it is needed most. And lastly, we need to do more on global stage. We live not in a vacuum. Uh, the strategy will help with that. And it will allow the EU to set an example, to set a tone on the sound management of, of chemicals, not just through our legislation, but by the way our industry operates as well, raising international standards and helping non-EU countries bring in measures to ensure the same level of protection. Protecting our planet and our shared environment has never been more important. It is political, moral, and human imperative. And, and we hear that message very clearly from the citizens of Europe. But I would add that it is also an economic necessity. Our future, our only future, is embarking in the green transition. And we must act first. We must act fast. And we must grasp the opportunities which are there, which are ahead. Thank you very much for your attention.